All right. So last Friday night, we find ourselves at the relatively new, and I say relatively new because it's been open for a few months, Top Golf down the street here in Baltimore, Maryland. And Top Golf, for those of you who don't know, it's an interactive driving range. You got targets, you can play arcade games. Uh, and because this one is new, there's a lot of, there's, a lot, there's bells and whistles all over the place. Long story short, Alan, uh, or actually his wife, Kelly, uh, was supposed to do, you guys, you guys, it was supposed to be what, the Friday before New Year's, right? It was the Friday, yeah, I think so, or but, the Friday before Christmas. Friday before Christmas, yeah, yeah, they set it up for, uh, for, for his, for his birthday party. Uh, it got canceled, extenuating circumstances, and they pushed it, uh, to this past Friday, which also kind of semi coincided with his wife's birthday, so it was great. Yep. Uh, about 15, 20 people showed up. Uh, <clears throat> the place has some growing pains. They're going to have to iron out a few things when it comes to like uh, serving people correctly. And, you know, we can get into that. That's, that's not that's not the bells and whistles and the yeah. nuts and bolts a of the story. A good time was had. A good time was had. We got jolly. We hit some golf balls. We shared some laughs. We said our happy birthdays. Upon leaving, okay, <clears throat> Alan, his wife, my girlfriend Sarah... And a friend of yours who I had actually never met before. Uh, uh, that's my buddy, Matt. Matt. He was, uh, one of my, he was one of my groomsmen. I grew up with him. Nice guy. Get into the elevator on the second floor to go down one flight of steps. It's one floor. Yeah. I see the door close. And I, and I, <laughs> I'm with other people who are like, no, we're not, we're, not, we're not rushing to get on that. And that's where I'll leave the story. And Alan will pick up. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think Wes lift that off as a cliffhanger, strangely, because it's not like this is a very new place. This place is, hasn't even been open like a whole quarter. Uh, and I may add, Alan, as someone who does like fire life and safety, you can bet your ass this place was tested to the fucking gills. Yeah, yeah, it's got a nice, got a nice system in it, uh, and like nice new elevator, brand, brand spanking new. You think nothing's wrong, so it's not like this was decrepit. It's not like. You looked at this elevator from the outside and were like, mm, I don't think I'm getting in that one. But to be fair, I don't even know why I got on it. It was only a floor down. I just <laughs> kind of followed my wife in the herd. And I was like, oh, we're getting on this. All right, fuck it. Let's go. Uh, and so I got on this elevator. And like you said, doors closed. Went down a whole level exactly like we were supposed to. And the doors did not open. They just, they tried. You could hear, you could hear gears turning, but they just wouldn't open. Uh, I think uh, your girlfriend, I think Sarah, at some some point tried to fucking Wonder Woman it open. Uh, <laughs> that did not work. Uh, and I immediately, uh, for fans of The Office, I uh, took Dwight's advice and said we need to establish a pee corner. And everybody was like, well, fuck, do you got a pee? And I was like, no, not yet. But, like, depends on how long we're in here. I might have to fucking piss. Like, it's going to happen. I've been drinking IPAs all night. It's going to be a problem here in a second. And your girlfriend, Sarah, also kind of co like agreed with me. She concurred. She was like, there might need to be a pee corner. Oh. Uh, for, whatever, for whatever reason, there began a tech, uh, a Twitter thread on the official middle class holes uh, Twitter account uh, coming from your girlfriend, stuck in elevator at Top Golf in Baltimore. And then the very next one is, Alan is with me. I have to pee. Followed by, they're saying 25 minutes. Followed by a classic Wesley Fox, uh, yank the head back, force a triple chin, uh, drinking at the bar picture, uh, followed by finally out, thanks. And that was, um, <laughs> uh, but I do have to know, Alan, at what point did you guys start looking for the escape hatch at the top of the elevator? Because that's right. the first thing I do anytime I get on one. Uh, so I've been in it, like, like Wes said, like, uh, I don't sell elevator stuff. We don't really touch them. But our fire alarm systems touch them, and they're integral to their functionality. So, like, I understand how they fucking work. And so, the 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 mob in the in the elevator began smashing buttons. They started hitting open door. They hit like other floors. I was like, stop, 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 motherfuckers! This is not how this shit works. You hit this fucking phone button, and a, a nice operator lady comes on the other end. And she's like, are you stuck in that elevator at this address? And I'm like, yep. And she's like, okay, we're going to get the, the authorities there. And then they call the fire department. And so we did that. And they were like, yeah, it's going to be 25 minutes. 45 minutes later, Ooh. did Baltimore City's finest open the door, which th kudos to them. 
I think I think they showed up rather quickly. I was just saying, they, <clears throat> so from someone who wasn't stuck in the elevator, who was at the bar <laughs> drinking, yeah. uh, but when they got there, w- when they stepped foot in the facility to open the doors, it was relatively swift. It was just a matter of them getting there, and yeah, it yeah. was about it was about forty five minutes. It was, yeah. and I kept getting texts and messages from Sarah like I had to pee. I was like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, yeah, do you want me to yeah, fucking no, do, we, do, you, do you want me to Jack Nicholson fucking the shining this fucking door? Was, like, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you check my Instagram, my personal Instagram reel, uh, I'm at Trevor underscore Saint underscore McGoodbody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you need that, I'll jot it down in the caption. Uh, but uh, yeah, so there's a reel where you see me being like, oh, we're stuck in this elevator. And Sarah... This, look, this is like 30 seconds into being stuck in this elevator. Sarah is like, I gotta pee. And it was like, oh man, this is gonna be a problem. Because like, once it hits me too, I don't really hold it. I gotta go. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is probably an issue that I should see a doctor about. Well, we'll get to that later. So, fucking... Yeah, man, it was fucking wild. We did chill out. Kelly almost had an, a panic attack, which I expected. Uh, but I think the good company really, br- really brought a good vibe about, so she cooled out. Uh, my buddy Matt's very level-headed, so he was just chilling. Uh, and yeah, me and Sarah were just trying not to pee ourselves. When the doors cracked open, literally, not a word was spoken. Yeah, like Sarah sprinted. She did. She did. Bathroom. She did a drive-by thank you, and I, Mur, I'm telling you, she she would have given fucking Carl Lewis a run for his money in a hundred mm-hmm. meter. <laughs> but it, thank was you. Nice, <laughs> it was definitely nice seeing pictures and like getting texts from. Or, like, hearing Sarah be like, well, Wes and them are at the bar, and, like, you could hear you guys laughing because you <laughs> it's very distinct, like, you and Doug. Like, so, like, you could hear you guys, and we're just like, yep, no. this is fun. <laughs> it, was, it, was, I was, it, was, it was your brother and, and, oh, your, yeah. and your sister-in-law, okay? No, well, I wasn't yeah. alone. Yeah. I was in good company, too. Yeah, no, you, it was, <laughs> look, it was good situations had by all, I think. Yeah. You know, I'm glad we all had a couple drinks in us. That was fun. We tested out um, tested out Top Golf's uh, elevator. It's yeah. uh, not great. I'm going to take the stairs from now. Yeah. And, Mer, and Mer, when when Baltimore City's Finest came, I mean, this was like a, like a full-on two-man crowbar. Oh, yeah. Opposite end, like, <sighs> yeah, they, they, they did a number on it. And I will say they, like, they... Sarah had said, like, I, I did try to do the fucking, like, pr- pry it open like you see in the movies, and that fucker would not budge. No. There's a locking Man. mechanism in there. Yeah. Don't now, that. Mur, are you, th- are, are you legitimately thinking, like, safety hatch up top? Like, all right, I'm going to pop yeah. this open, someone give me the boost, and then I'm going to shimmy yeah. up the... Uh, the, the... Well, where are you going? Yeah. I, 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 to well, other I'll doors that won't open? <laughs> I'll find out when I get there. Here's the thing is how many opportunities do you have to try it without like it being considered you being a dickhead asshole? Like mm. it, it because like, okay, like if I was just in a regular hotel and I'm like, huh, I bet your safety hatch is right there. Let me give me a boost. Let's try it out. Like they're going to fucking they're going to arrest you or they're going to fine you for something. But if you're legitimately locked in the elevator, I don't think I can be like, my wife's having a panic attack. You could just say that and be like, I had to get, I had to figure out something to get out of here. And you know me, look at me. I'm 5'6". I'm 125 pounds. Alan, you get down in a four-point stance. Uh, Sarah gets on your back. I climb Sarah. I fucking find it. I get up there. Again, I don't know what I'm going to find. But maybe mm. there's like a ladder to the second floor. And I'm, I'm a hero. There's or at least I can go down to the bar and drink and laugh at you guys on the other side of the door. So I can tell you that not all elevators have top hatches. That's movie stuff. That's and, bullshit. And fucking. <laughs> and also, uh, like, I've been in the pit and the shaft, which is what they're called, uh, the bottom and the top of the fucking elevator, and they're kind of horrifying. Like I don't like be, especially in the fucking pit. I do not like being in the pit. That's not cool. Like, most pits have, like, springs, yeah. like, this fucking big, for if they, like, actually do drop. It's not It's not a fucking comforting place Ooh. to be. And that's when the fucking elevator guy went in there and was, like, mechanically keyed shut off. Nope, still fucking weird. 
<laughs> it's yeah. very yeah. No, you better make sure you don't just like you're not going to be able to reach up to the second floor, and there's still going to be doors. I'll climb the cable, man. You don't understand. Yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm a that's, wily tiger. You gotta better, a, better make sure you. Is, is your tetanus shot up to date? No. <laughs> Sure is. <laughs> I've been told three times by doctors that I need to get a tetanus shot. That's like I'm always like, a good one. Like someone's like, "When's your last tetanus shot?" I'm like, uh, uh, I Listen, I know when my last tetanus shot was. I know that I was 12 I years old. Oh, I know when mine was. It was recently. I thought. Well, you didn't have to have. You didn't have to have one uh, when you went to Maryland. Probably. Uh-huh. Maybe you you just don't really killed. have to get one unless you're like doctors on top of it and you go to the fucking same primary care you've gone to since you were like 18. Unless every time. On something. Yeah. Every time I go, every time I go, they're like, you know, it's time for your tennis shot. I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. The last you, time I. you step on a nail. Last time I got it, they put it in my, like, I, I honestly think I have, like, nice, <laughs> nice, uh, what do you call those things in the back of the arm? Tricep. Triceps. Tricep. Tricep. I think I have nice triceps because they put it in my triceps and like they swelled up like like I had like horse legs. Not and only, I was like, damn. Not only do you have a nice tricep, show us that again. You have a if you if you lift that up, you have a really good tattoo underneath there. That I mean, that thing's fucking. Now, now that one. Now let look. That look, is good. If, yes, I like if the one. If I frame the screen there, that one's nice. But then we come up a little bit more, and it's like, hey, look, I was a teenage dirtbag. Oh yes, the the, the mark of the native Cecil Cecil Tucky. <laughs> Got it. That's right. Which is the the, the na- native markings of the Caucasian Cecil Tucky. Uh, Southern Susquehannock. If you will, okay. <laughs> I do believe that I could, I could, I could get a, a fine artist to turn that into like some waves crashing against. Yeah, the, you uh, probably could. Yeah, I should probably do that soon. Yeah. Hey, look, I, turn I my Bill Goldberg work. barbed wire into a uh, waves, man. <laughs> that is a hundred percent Bill Goldberg barbed wire, by the way. Actually, it's got my initials in it. Look, you see the A? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Huh? You see the T? Uh-huh. Huh? And you then look, you see the M? Huh? 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 Yeah. How come every every piece of barbed wire or like travel had their the person's initials in it? They're like it's so it's so fucking individualistic. <laughs> so, it's only me. I'm the only one. But but wait, there's more. If you notice in the red, there's a lucky number thirteen in there. Huh? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's what you could have told Alan and them if you were stuck in the elevator. Look, I got this lucky number here. Now shimmy me up. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna Andrew McLean this shit. <laughs> shimmy me through this solid roof. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's if you keep pun- if roof. you keep hitting it with your palm, it'll pop open. It'll I saw pop, it. It's like a secret hatch. <laughs> I I just have to break all the fluorescent bulbs first. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, fire department goes in. What the fuck is this? <laughs> There's about to be a pea corner. Yeah. That's, all I, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. all I gotta say. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it 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 was uh <clears throat> it was I mean, I got another couple couple beers and I will say we we when we had left, uh because we, we had walked there, we're within walking distance of a oh, few yeah, of right. a few of a few breweries and uh I was like, Hey, do you think we could stop like just stop and get a beer? I mean it's still relatively early. I think it was like what? Uh Oh, it was like 10. 10-ish? Like 9.30. Yeah, well, by the time we got it, I was like 10. Yeah, and, and breweries around here, especially on Fridays, they don't stay open. They, 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 like, to, they like to get it done early and, and get out relatively yeah. early. Um, so, But they were all closed, and we got back, and we had no beer. So I made myself a vodka and, I don't know, like a LaCroix. And Sarah was like, hey, you didn't have enough at the bar while I was stuck at the fucking elevator? <laughs> I could have saw that coming, baby. I'm sorry. I'm not going to dump this out. <laughs> I don't know, waste this. Hey, look at this face. <laughs> she posted the triple chin. Fuck her. All right, middle class souls, everybody. Murr and a semi-safe Allen out of his. Uh, jail sentence for 45 minutes in a Top Golf elevator, and Fox Man, happy to have you here. 
Uh, hey, look, first friend or foe of the new year, 2023. It's January, but in certain places of the country, that don't matter. Water parks are open. People are getting promiscuous and wearing fucking things that people may deem inappropriate. Murr, let's hear it. All right. I'm going to read a news story to you. See if you agree or disagree. Friend or foe, a woman was slammed for wearing an inappropriate swimsuit that left her buttocks bare at a family water park. In a video shared by TikToker Kim Stram, a woman is seen wearing a nude-colored bathing suit with a G-string thong that barely holds her modesty. And, um, well, I, I don't know. Do we have, do we have yeah, screen down share? At the down at the bottom, you see the share. You can, you can share that. No, I, don't, I don't see shit, okay? <laughs> God damn. New, new things. All right, I'll, I'll share. Hold on. Gotta find this goddamn story. I thought you would read it to us. God damn it. It's asking me to open my system fucking preferences. It doesn't matter. Fuck it. You guys know what a G string looks like. That's exactly what she's wearing. She's got a piece of dental floss going up between her ass cheeks. Uh, when the woman turns away from the camera, it becomes visible fuck. that the back of her swimwear is made of just a tiny slither of fabric, a G string, and a zigzag feature across her shoulders. So, friend or foe? Just because they call it a swimsuit isn't a swimsuit and is it appropriate for public consumption, especially at a family water park? So, friend or foe, should she be allowed to wear this at a family water park? Wes, we will start with you. I mean, should she be made to wear it or should she be allowed to wear it? I I mean, it's a free country. You You can wear anything you want, in my humble opinion, okay? One man's opinion, without children, by the way, if this is, in fact, more of a family-oriented theme park, she ought to use better judgment, a little more discretion, and wear something that covers her ass. Go to the beach if you want to do that. Go to South Beach. I don't know where the fuck this place was, uh, but I don't know. Go, Go to Cabo San Lucas. Go to Jamaica. Go to fucking Ocean City, Maryland. All right? Uh, which it, 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 you'll probably get a few Karens and Kens be like, hey, what are you doing? You, my, my kids are here. But yeah, the water park, I don't know. Unless she has some compelling argument about like, this is the only thing I had. I don't know. And then, of course, like the dad's like, well, I mean, pff, you might as well take it off. But I just, <laughs> I, I do, I, I think it's, a, I, it is inappropriate. Um, although I, here's what I'm going to say is like, oh, these are my, these are my kids. My kids can't see this stuff. Well, like, listen, buddy, if your kid wants to see it, they're going to see it. And especially this day and age, someone like myself who grew up and was like, you know, dabbling in porn in the early nineties and I'm 40. So go ahead and do the fucking math. Uh, you can figure that out one for yourself. They're going to see it, but uh, just a, a, a little decorum, if you will, goes a long way. Okay, Alan. I don't know what uh, in classic fashion. I don't know which one's friend or which one's foe. But uh, okay, this one's pretty easy to to figure <laughs> out. Okay, this one splits the uprights just like that fucking G string splits you, her butt cheeks. You, okay, usually I'm the drunk fuck. Like, all right, oh, uh, hold on, Mur. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't paying attention to that part. I was you were looking something. at her ass. <laughs> I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna change the parameter slightly just for you since we're reiterating here. So should the water park be allowed to kick her out for wearing a G string at a family water park? Uh, considering, look, it's it's obviously very sexual fucking swimwear that she's wearing. This isn't like functional like that. Honestly, she's not there to go down any fucking water slides. She's gonna lose all her ass meat if she does, and there's a lot of ass meat. Ooh, yeah, there's a, listen, there, there is no uh, denying the fact that this is a beautiful woman. This yes. is not, uh, you know, this is not a 55 year old uh, mother of three who their her kids have kids type thing. Yeah. So what do you think, Alan? I, look. From like if I was a politician, <laughs> I, I would have a campaign on a pro cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So in this instance. I'm I'm for it. Let her let her let them cheeks let them cheeks fly, but like 
are you asking me if a private business can kick someone out for showing some cheeks? Okay, maybe short, I shouldn't have fucking changed the parameters. Short, short conservative. Yeah. Uh, no, so let's say <laughs> they, they, absolutely. Down. I think they they got they well within their rights to be like, look, children play here and eat chicken tenders, and you 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 gotta put the cheeks away. Me as a bystander at said pool, cheek it up, get them cheeks out there. Do they float? Let's find out. Like <laughs> things of that nature. They do look like a nice solid flotation device. That's, so that's again, sure. pro cheeks. Pro business liberty. That is a <laughs> fabulous non answer. You've politicized <laughs> the shit out of that one. Look, bottom line, <laughs> no you shouldn't look look, so there's appropriate wear for appropriate places. Like I said, I think you should up per if you want to go to fucking South Beach and wear your fucking flaw grass, then get all in it. Get all up in there. But this is a place where you take and if there are prepubescent boys, they're not gonna be able to fucking like tummy slide down any fucking water water tubes because <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna get kickstand all the way down. They're gonna lose their dick. You don't want a twelve year old to lose his dick, okay? The, it's inappropriate. We should all god damn it, we live in a fucking society where we should be able to decide what's right and what's wrong. And this is wrong. Don't wear a G string bikini to a fucking family friendly water park. End of story. It's it's so bad. It's terrible. I mean, I like looking at it, and I'm sure every dad in the water park enjoyed looking at it. However, yeah, it's inappropriate. Hold on, check, I mean, check this. There's just cheeks. Is check, it maybe check that it. our social mores aren't aren't aligned with our values? Check. Like, Good. Check. I was saying, like, check out this photo. You have long sleeve yeah. T-shirt from Ken, Hawaiian shirt from Ken. Uh, I don't know, water shirt from Ken, <laughs> like basketball <laughs> jersey from much, Ken. Look at how much <laughs> not flabby male skin you're looking at. You mean to tell me you can't accept these two cheeks? Chin strap from Brian, who just got done washing water out of his eyes, who came up to the most fucking yeah, grandest. Like, oh, shit, look at that. <laughs> wow, I need to, I can't stand up because, wow, things are amazing. Like, she was turned around and he was swimming in shadow. And then she turned frontwards and he was like, look, oh my God. If I'm at, like, an all-inclusive, like, scandals or something, then, yeah, that that's fine. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I've got young William with me, and he's just, like, confused. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm Why starting to feel. Because he's, like, eight, and he's like, I'm having feelings I shouldn't have for three more years. <laughs> I mean, the cheeks will do that. That's what you tell him. You know, those are words of wisdom. Yeah. And he's gonna and he's gonna be sitting there asking me like, Daddy, yeah, why, 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 why that that woman, that woman that she why why is her butt out? And I'm gonna have to explain to him, well, some women are whores, son. And some <laughs> <laughs> what you should be like is like, listen, son. Men have driven women to the point where they feel like this is the stuff they should wear in public. <laughs> and now we we got to kind of overcorrect because we were yeah. like, get them cheeks out, girl. Yeah. And now we're like, oh, my kid's here. Put them cheeks away. You, make uh, you, and, me, son, you and me are a dying breed. We're crusaders. We're changers. <laughs> we're bar shifters. Son, let me tell you about a man named Andrew Tate. Now, you see, <laughs> Mr. Tate has women that he calls property and forces them to wear things that maybe they don't want to wear. But he wants everybody to know that that's his woman, and his woman's got some nice buttocks. Now get your ass up on that super looper and go down face first, stomach first, all right? <laughs> if you're feeling squirrely, aim for the cheeks. <clears throat> hey, you can, tell, you can tell him. I mean, I was born in 1982. I didn't see it in theaters. I think I saw it a couple years later, but definitely in the late 80s, The Adventures of Babysitting, which mm. is uh, Elizabeth Shue. That's when I knew I was a heterosexual man. Yeah. Poor boy. I was like, yep, like that. God dang, man. Yeah, that was a that was a good one. I'm three years older than you, so imagine my feelings. <laughs> confusion all around. Oh, well, there was no confusion. <laughs> yeah, but the thing of it is like the, the, like this is not a one off case. This is not some uh random one person yacht. I I'm sure this happens at every fucking water park across the country, at least a little bit. This isn't gonna stop. 
are hangering like, hey, this is inappropriate. There's still going to be dumbasses like, oh, I wear what I want. I go out to these water parks. I put anything I fucking want on. And it goes both ways. There's going to be men like, I put this fucking banana hammock on in front of the kids. I don't give a fuck. I go down the zip line with my legs wide open. Ah, la, 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 la. Bro. I'm, a, I I'm an Aztec saw, warrior. <laughs> I saw like a 60-year-old dude in a banana <laughs> hammock in Jamaica. And I immediately told Kelly. I need a fucking banana hammock. Yeah. I'm going to a third world country. Fuck it, bro. I'm I'm let fuck it. Let's go, well, dude. Straight. I, I ball ball long hammock too. This guy had on. Yeah, but you wouldn't go. You wouldn't go to a moose lodge <clears throat> and be like, "Yeah, let me get that banana hammock." Well, I wouldn't go to a moose lodge because I'm this color. <laughs> <laughs> That's a totally different story. All right. <laughs> but you're I right. Got- I wouldn't go to. Like the community pool, probably in my banana hammock. Yeah. I um, as a as a joke, we forced our intern to go uh to a Subway sandwich shop in a, a bikini briefs. Um, and so I bought the whole pack. And so just as a lark, I was like, well, let me keep a couple of these back here. I want to try one on. Let me tell you something, man. Bikini brief underwear might be the most comfortable underwear you love yeah, to put on your body. Is. Yeah. yeah. There was uh I won't name names. There's a, a a mutual friend of our of ours who had a vasectomy who had who wore them and was like, damn, I I, I he had to wear it to keep things bunched in, but he was like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I it's gonna be tough going back. I may have I may have cracked <laughs> well, I could, the code. I, could back, I, I may have hit the cheat code. I may have hit that that thirty lives in Contra. Well and think about it like Last episode, we were talking about the WWE. That's what those guys wear most of the time, and we don't even blush at it because it's the. It, uh, this kind of comes into play with what we're talking about. Like, it's the arena. It's it's is this attire appropriate for this situation? And apparently, sweaty men rubbing up against each other. It is appropriate to wear a bikini brief um, at a water park. You know, under general circumstances, technically naked would probably be the best way, way to go. But we would all. I would hope conclude that that's an inappropriate fashion choice at a water park. So simulated nudity is probably inappropriate as well. Meh. <laughs> it's, a water, it's a water park. You know, it's weird. Like, it's one of those things. Like you said, I mean, we, we're a little bit more, <clears throat> strangely, slightly more uptight here. Yeah. About things like that. And, I, like, I mean, <clears throat> with... Younger, like I mean, the 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 ass is getting shown more and more. Like okay, w- like when we were teenagers, bikinis, two piece bikinis, like hell yeah, and all the ass was covered. Now the norm with mm-hmm. t- like teens and, and into the mid twenties is uh, like either some thong or mostly thong. Thanks, bro. Yeah, you got these thick ass bitches out here just yeeks <laughs> all over the place. Fuck. Cheeks, bro, is out. It's outlandish, and I'm here for it. Man, yeah. I think I appreciate. it. By the way, I wasn't complaining. I wasn't. This wasn't no, some sort no, of like like get again, on. If this was an all adult water park, then go for it. But mm-hmm. like when kids are around, come on, you got to cover up a little bit. But I don't want to derail. Actually, I do kind of want to derail this conversation. Um, I I keep getting into a conversation with my cousin about this because we, for some reason we were talking about Victoria's Secret the other day. Are Instagram models hotter? To you guys, than Victoria's Secret models. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's such a variety, though. Yeah, so I think like, like, like it's not, Victoria's Secret models are very like one dimensional. Sure, like they just come in different flavors. Like Instagram models can be whatever you want. They come in all types of shapes and sizes and flavors. It's crazy. Yeah. So, well, yeah while yeah. while Victoria's Secret over the last like five years has tried their best to kind of break the mold for the most part they know what they want they know what type of model they want to uh to model their their lingerie and that's not to say they're they're you know they're not hot they're all beautiful uh but like Mer- or alan said yeah i mean the algorithm works the algorithm eventually knows what you like the al- algorithm eventually knows what you like oh damn like that like those curves, like that thickness, like that ass, like them 36, 24, 36. Sir Mix a lot. Here we go. Hum a bump. You know what? I'm a jerk off. Here we go. Woo! And <laughs> and <laughs> I've never done that. That's an asking for a friend thing. But uh-huh. uh I I mean, yeah, I think I would say it's it's more of a what preference thing, and Instagram is going to find your preference. 
Well, I mean, I just, I just think growing up, I always thought that like the 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 perfect female physique was somewhere between like, I don't know, like a hundred five pounds to a hundred and twenty five pounds. But thanks to Instagram, I'm learning that it's actually more like one twenty five to like one forty five, and like just fucking like, ooh, lao, yeah, yoga pants, give them to me, nice. Good job. I like those abs. Damn titties looking nice. Look at all that roundness going on. You fit. Damn, you could probably bench press me and you're probably smaller than me. I like to follow your workout routine, girl. Let me see this. You do. Some shimmies, some shakes, some shimmy shakes. Where do we go with this? Great. I don't know. God, God, I'm, I don't know. I'm getting a little sweaty here. Yeah, because we're working it up here at the middle class holes. Yeah. All right. So I think we can agree there's a place in time with a thong bikini. It's not at a kid's water park, but rock that shit uh, wherever you want. And in Alan's case, like he said, if you're in Jamaica and you're a dude, fucking show them cheeks as well. Maybe even a little side ball. There's side tit. Is there a side ball? I mean, I feel like a ball's got to fall out eventually, right? Long ass balls. Long balls. Change your well, draws. Change your draws. Yeah. Doc, you've yeah, seen my you testicles. Gotta, you gotta go with the no fly zone? <laughs> you've seen my testicles. Are they big? I, th- I would say they're a bit they're more distended than the. A bit distended than the average. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that is your friend or foe. <laughs> Sorry. Al- Alan and I saw that episode on Curb Your Enthusiasm. We were <laughs> like really, really drunk and <laughs> absolutely fucking lost it. So, all right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, it's. I think it's time to expand our minds and get silly with this new calendar that I liked last week. God damn! I want some more. Feed me, see more. Feed me. Fun fact Friday. It's time to floss those brain cells with a little bit of mental flosses. Amazing facts. That's right, my friends. Five fun facts for you fuckers on a Friday, of course. Brought to you by our good friends over at the Shin Splints Recovery Group. That's what Alex Smith used to get through his tremendous and excruciating surgeries when he broke his leg in traumatic fashion and then came back as Player of the Year for the Washington Commanders. (laughs) And, of course, you can see him presented in all his glory over at the Shin Splints Recovery Group. Find him on Facebook. Let's hear it. Five amazing facts. Did you know? In the 1980s, a German broadcaster was interested in purchasing the rights to the A-Team, which made its American television debut 40 years ago today. However, they found the show had a tendency to be excessively violent, and this is coming from the Germans, and chose to run just 26 of the series' 98 episodes. I didn't realize there was only 98 episodes of the A-Team. Was that four seasons worth, roughly? Four or five? That's about yeah. five. I think they had to do five to get the syndication. And yeah. Um, so yeah. So 98 episodes. Well, they didn't even get to 100. That's amazing. But yeah, they only ran 26 of them. Hmm. Strange. I mean, they did, like, I think I you would be shocked if you look back at some, some of those, especially in your childhood. Because your childhood's a little more, uh, you know, like a year is like 10 years in your childhood. You know, you think AT Ma, that was a long lasting show. In retrospect, no, nah, not so much. Yeah, I just think for me, it came on at like three o'clock on like WBFF Fox 45. So, like, every day the A team was on, whether I saw it or not. And I probably didn't understand most of the episodes. And the second time I saw it, it probably made more sense to me than the first time I saw it. And then, you know, like, so it, yeah, it seemed like there was a lot more. But, um, A team was a, there was a good show. And I, by the way, the violence in the A-Team, especially now looking back on it, it's fucking ridiculous. It's comical. It's not even, like, violent anymore. And you never really saw anybody die. You just saw them fall down, like, bullet. You heard bullets. You heard guns go off. And then you saw people fall down. There's no bloodshed, technically. And most of the A-Team schemes, you know, brought up by Hannibal were clever. They weren't killing. They were just, like, booby traps and shit. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a good goddamn show. Yeah, and then of course you had Mr. T. But I pity the fool. <laughs> we actually had I had an A team. Uh, who? What was his character? B. A. Baracus. That's right. I we we had I had a B. A. Baracus uh, string doll that would uh, <clears throat> would say you know like uh, what I pity the fool. Uh, like I'm trying to think of some of those other catch lines. 
Respect your mother. Uh, who, who, there was someone on on, on the eighteen that used to be like, you're, you're, you're crazy. Seymour, you're crazy. Uh, that was one. But yeah, we, my, you're crazy, not Seymour. Seymour. No, you're no, right. That, that's from that, that's from Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm getting it mixed up here. But anyway, our cousin Murdoch, Murdoch, you're crazy, you Murdoch, Murdoch, you're crazy. He would uh, he would do the pull string, He'd be like never listen to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> By the oh, way, always do drugs. <laughs> there, there was a there was a Rocky marathon on uh, like a weekend or two ago, and my God, dude, Mr. T. I don't care how cheesy Rocky Three is, Mr. T. is fucking fantastic in that movie. Yeah, like I, I'm not kidding. Like I, you may think I'm joking. I'm not joking. Mr. T. was amazing in that movie. Clubber Lang. Listen, go back and watch it if you want to, and you can fact check me on this. Never threw a single jab. No, he threw all hooks. Lefts and right hooks. Yeah. I, I, uh, when uh, the last fight night they made was on Xbox 360, and you could create a character, and I created Clubber Lang, and all I gave him were hooks and uppercuts. That's all he threw. He had no jab, nothing. Because you were so you were a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, yeah. Not that not that I was like doing copy box stuff for for Rocky movies, but I just remember watching it one time. I think relatively inebriated, uh, and I was like, "Wow, fucking guy never threw a jab." <laughs> I, by the way, I also made myself and Wes. You know me, never mm-hmm. give up, never quit. I gave my guy all heart. Um, wasn't very wasn't very strong, but he was fast. And he had to go into early retirement because he had brain damage. Mm. <laughs> Hilarious. I got up from a, I got knocked down a lot and I got up a lot. <laughs> kind of like a, a more, uh, what's, what's the raging bull uh, with De Niro. Yeah. Like an but Arturo just, Gotti kind of character. But just much more tragic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very much more tragic. <laughs> Did you know? In English, someone who wants to talk up their accomplishments might toot their own horn or sing their own praises. But in Finland, they use the expression "kuka kasan hanan hasta halikisa itsta," which translates to "Who would raise a cat's tail if not the cat himself?" <laughs> I have heard so I've been on a TikTok fucking I think like whole the algorithm got me about like weird northern European fucking sayings yeah. and like yeah I have I've recently heard that one and there's a ton of them like that and it's just very unusual wait 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 is it so you legitimately cross paths with that ridiculous Finnish statement yeah there's a there's like a bunch of other ones there's like a, like a Norwegian <laughs> one that's like like why would why would the it's like similar. It's like why would the cat piss on on your leg or so, like something stupid? It's just like yeah. it doesn't even make sense. Like I don't. I, I feel very Larry David now. Like I'm like what is what is this? Like yeah, well, no, it's bad. I'm trying to make sense of the cat tail thing. Is it because a cat like when they do something shitty, they like to turn around and like, like yeah. show you their asshole, like so. like and like they they express their asshole. They're like yes, look at this. You see this asshole? I know it's not attractive. Stare at it, human. Is that what it is? Who would raise yeah, the cat's tail but the cat himself? Yeah, perhaps. Like, yeah, who, who, would, would, who would care if, like, maybe? I don't even know. I don't, I don't even understand it. Yeah, who, who, who would be arrogant enough to show their ass unless you were an arrogant ass? I guess. I, I, I mean, that's my, 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 my only... <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't speak Finnish. <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. I you, you can go back and listen to that translation. Yeah. I guarantee it's nowhere. I, they're they're good at like three things: fishing, bobsledding, and I don't fishing. know. Fucking, did that. I think they've had a couple world's strongest men. <laughs> the finish, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, withstanding the cold, yeah. they have that too. That's true. And racism, they're really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, that's some, a, of, the, some of the best. <laughs> Maybe only second to one other nation. (laughs) Did you know, if you ever caught a cat or dog poking the tip of its tongue past its front teeth, you've seen a blep in action. Animal experts aren't entirely sure why pets blep, 
but in cats, it may have something to do with the flamen response, and they're trying to get maximum smelling ability. Because, you know, taste and smell are correlated, so yeah. if they, nah, 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 they stick their tongue out while they're sniffing, it gives them extra, extra sensory. Mm, a blepin. A blep. Mm, a, a blepo. I thought that I was I was disappointed in that fact because I thought it was like that's them burping, you know, like and it's called a blep. Mm. Blep. Blep. That's Good what talent. I thought. That's where I thought it was going. I'm still hung up on this fucking odd European sayings thing. I'm fucking <laughs> googling them right now. I got a bunch. Of them. <laughs> well, I, I love looking up like where like colloquialisms come from and like uh, okay, here you go. Mind your p's and q's. You guys know where that comes from? Oh, I do know this, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. There were so many bar fights in, like, Northern Ireland that they would say, the bartender would literally say, mind your pints and quarts. Yes, that's so right. You didn't spill your beer when people started throwing shit across the fucking room. Hold that, Just Mind yeah. your P's and Q's. Gotcha. So hold on to your beer, because it's going down. Yeah, like, <laughs> Cro- Croatia, the pussycat will come to the tiny door. What, what, what does that mean? It, it tell you, I hear. I tell you what it means. About what uh, what goes around comes around. That's there. What goes around comes around. The pussy cat comes to the tiny door. So yeah, like for example, don't be cruel, Marco. When the pussy cat comes to the tiny door, then you'll be sorry. Yeah. I'd be like, what? No, shut up. <laughs> go go away from me. <laughs> this is why American English is the best language in the world because we took all the bullshit that everybody else had to offer and we we're like nah okay we yeah. got a chance to start over here if someone said that to me i'd ask if they had a stroke did you right? did you did you have a stroke sound like <laughs> words that should be together did you do you have a major brain aneurysm that just you just blurted out did you just blap <laughs> did you just blap no <laughs> oh, crazy did you know Brothers Isaac Taylor and Zach Hansen, a.k.a. Hansen, the band who rose to fame in 1997 with their hit song, Mmm Bop, started a craft beer business in 2015. The first brew they released was a pale ale called Mmm Hops. <laughs> I did. Oh, you knew that? I didn't know that. Did you cross paths with Mmm Hops? Well, I never had one, but I remember like hearing about it because I was a beer nerd for like two years. Gotcha. Wow. Good for them, man. I mean, yeah, Yeah. good for them. I respect anybody who understands that their time has passed and capitalizes on it. Like somebody like uh, like George Takai, like he was Lieutenant Sulu, like what, 50 years ago now? Listen, you illiterate fuck. He was captain. He became captain. He never went back to lieutenant captain. Okay, but he started out. Okay, Lieutenant Sulu. You don't you you don't call a general a colonel. Like, hey, yo, Colonel. Oh, you were once a Colonel. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> okay, fine. Captain fucking Sulu. Mm. Bob, oh, okay, go my. on. <laughs> okay, no, mm. but so they, they, they understood that they were basically a one-hit wonder. Yeah. And then they were like, they started their new venture, and they said, okay, how do we sell this beer? I know. Let's just fucking, let's just fucking, like, not rest on our laurels and call it mm hops. Me, me and Dewey have a saying that's it's just it's pretty simple. It's make that money, make that money, make that money. But and speaking of make that money, I think what they should do is they should do a revised version of Mbop in which George Takai goes Mbop, dip it up it up Mbop. No, but he said, "Oh my, yeah. oh my." <laughs> there you oh go. My. It'd be a hit. <laughs> and by the way, that oh my comes from uh, the Howard Stern show. Mm-hmm. I did not realize that. He like uh, I can't remember what he said. Oh, somebody was. Howard said something like somebody walk walking like that must have a huge dong, and and George Takai just responds with oh my, and then Stern played it over and over and over again yeah. when other guests came and he just had the sound bite and then George Takai came fam- became famous for that. Well, he used to he was a guest uh, like for a week twice a year because mm-hmm. him and Stern go go way back. So how that how that odd couple became you know buddies who the hell knows but it was funny when he was on the show. I like George Takai, but I don't like George Takai because he's got such a fucking axe to grind. 
speaking of <laughs> phrases, that <laughs> with with fucking Shatner, it's like yeah. uh, I. Yeah. I, I don't respect him for it. It's just like, because I've never heard William Shatner say anything bad about George Takai. And then George Takai is always like, that bloated hamster doesn't deserve to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, come on, buddy. That's a pretty good Takai, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I like it. I like it. He and, does be shitting on him, though. There's got to be a reason. And what? And what's Takai? What's, uh, what, what's his nationality? I think he's Japanese. Korean, Japanese. Yeah, he, 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 I'm just saying. He'd be like, "Oh, and we say this back in our native land of Korea. Wait till the hamsters come out to crow, you old wanker dick." <laughs> 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 oh my! Oh my! Oh, and finally, did you know Michelangelo, who often did not sign his work? may have accidentally left a thumbprint on a wax sculpture's buttocks. Nice. Yeah. yeah you, think, you think that was an accident? Mm, Maybe he wow. saw that wax buttocks at a water park one day. It was like, ah, I need that right there. <laughs> put my, put my, this, is a, this is my signature. Yuck. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, why, why wouldn't someone, like, I guess, was he not that egotistical to, to want to, you know, put a little M... M. Angelo on I don't there? think he wanted I don't think he wanted to scar the work. You know what I mean? Like you know, you make something and it's like you've got the hubris to like sign it. Like I just created this like amazing thing and now I'm gonna like ruin it by scrawling yeah. my name across it. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Integrity. Yeah. Unlike that dirty fuck Bill Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna die this year according to me oh that's what are you done with fun fact friday to the last one yes and oh. that my friends is your fun fact friday i based upon i, I meant to say this on our last episode and i did it, we had talked about the wrestling thing and i should ba- as many as as many as those guys die a year one of us should have guessed a wrestler someone should have been like i that's true who who's up next i don't know typhoon or fucking <laughs> One of the nasty Typhoon's boys. Typhoon's probably been gone for a while. No, he's still alive. Earthquake's dead. Typhoon's still around. Damn. Shit. Typhoon yeah, or, or Tugboat or, or the Shockmaster or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Shock, the Shockmaster. The greatest fuck up in wrestling history. Yeah. We're wearing a pawn shop fucking stormtrooper helmet painted over fogs fucking down. Having to do hand gestures while Ole Anderson does the voiceover. Yeah, I don't know. One of the bushwhackers was it Butcher Luke probably or up there. But anyway, I digress. Thank you for thank you for fun fact riding and expanding our minds. Alan, tell all the children where you can find the middle class holes. Oh, you know, you can check us out. On all your favorite social medias, check us out at MDL Class Holes on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we're the Middle Class Holes on Facebook and TikTok. And for your listening pleasures, please check us out and follow us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. That's right. I may have I may have been a little out of line uh, in terms of the, the the sequence, but fuck it, whatever. Uh, this week and today. Uh, and before you go, this is the Middle Class Holes Badass of the Month. We haven't done one since November, which we uh, chronicled a guy who ate 30 rotisserie chickens in 30 days. He's still, badass. He's still a badass to me. Uh, so this gentleman, uh, this comes out of Wyoming. These two, uh, Division II, I, can't, I couldn't figure out. I actually looked it up, but it wouldn't uh, let me know if they were Division One or Division Two wrestlers. Either way, collegiate wrestlers, Kendall Cummings and Brad Lowry, we're out doing what collegiate wrestlers do in the middle of wrestling season. Hunting. They, and at one point, a uh, bear appeared at close uh, range and heavy cover. And it, it attacked uh, attacked one of them. Uh, Cummings, Mr. Cummings, uh, Kendall Cummings, uh, saved his buddy. Jumped on the goddamn bear. Bear attacked him. Uh, at one point, he said, I could, in quote, I could hear his teeth hit my skull. I could feel uh, he'd bite down on my bones and kind of crunch. Apparently enough adrenaline came in. I'm going to share this with you. This is what uh, the good friend looked like after saving his friend. I tell you what, if that friend doesn't buy you fucking beer for life, 
He ain't no fucking yeah. friend. Uh, now, he's going to have some plastic surgery. I think things are going to help out. His friend didn't get away unscathed. I think he broke his wrist and fucked a, fucked a finger up really good. Uh, but, yeah, I was uh. like, oh, man, you can't point at something. Look at me. I'll never get laid again. Um, but, man, dude. The, I don't know. You get mauled by a bear. I'm pretty sure you get laid. You're a good point. It's a good point. Um, I, I, I mean, I digress. I don't need to get into any more of the details. Middle class was badass of the month. He saved his friend from a fucking bear attack and felt fucking canines crunching into his fucking skull. Your mm. thoughts on this guy? I mean, sh- if he's not winning a national championship, <laughs> God bless the men ahead of him. Okay, well, does this adjust your... Wait, what, does it say what kind of... Wait, what kind of bear was it? Uh, I think it was a grizzly. A grizzly. Okay, grizzly. so this, does this adjust your number of human men that can <laughs> fight a bear and possibly successfully win? I, I don't remember what the number was. I think it was 50. 50? Do you have to kill the bear? I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, you had to kill the bear yeah. to win. I mean, that's, it still holds up. I, I definitely don't need 50. I don't I I would have to go check the tape because I think I said under 50. But fucking, yeah. I mean, you could probably survive a bear attack if you play your cards right. <laughs> Apparently, this guy had a great hand. Yeah, and let's see. Yeah. This guy drank fucking four gallons of milk every day since he was two. Like, uh... <laughs> Dad. <laughs> there was that. Uh, you, ever, you guys ever watch those Alaska shows? Yeah, yeah. what is it? Something up north, good. right? Surviving yeah, up north? Uh, it's, I forget what this one is. Um, but there's like, a, I've probably mentioned it before, but there's like a crazy old bat that fucking lives up above the Arctic Circle. She like runs like a research outpost. It's like the only place that fucking like research teams have. I don't, listen, and, I don't even think it's a research outpost, Alan. I think it's just a runway and she just keeps it, it clear is. for him. It yeah. is. That's really all it is. And like, it's like the only place to have like gas and like showers in like 300 or like 500 miles. It's even fucking something silly. And that bitch, like she sleeps in like little like tent, like long homes, like Indian long homes, but they're just like modern, like tent style. And that bitch got attacked by a polar bear in fucking bed like it bit her head and then that bitch pulled out like a 40 fucking magnum and was like pow and shot that bitch and like crawled and to the radio and radioed for someone to come help her like <sighs> you can live and now she'd be fucking she has like a bazooka next to her bed everyone's dying <laughs> <laughs> when the next bear comes through but yeah i think you could do it and polar bears are the biggest fucking bears on the planet I guess I, I guess we end it there. I don't know what the hell what else to say. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> moral of the story is uh, carry a big gun and fucking you could you could survive a bear attack. Can we can we can we all applaud the efforts of this young man for saving his buddy uh, and surviving oh, yeah. fucking grizzly bear attack? Is that bad? We, oh, yeah. we can say this is the badass of the month and maybe yeah. probably in the running for the badass of the year. Because oh, I'm saying we're going to vote on this at the end of the year. Yeah, well, no, listen. Yeah. I, and I and I, I do agree with you that like that friend, whenever they're out, wherever yeah. they are, hey man, you want to go to the O's game? Yeah, I got your ticket. Mm-hmm. Like everything is comped. Like whenever these two go out on like exclusive adventures together, right. like homeboy ain't paying for shit. And I will say, uh, if we, if we continue to do these, I mean every every month, every six weeks, and if we're going to vote on a badass of the year and we'll even carry over rotisserie chicken guy we got a pretty big gap between grizzly bear <laughs> assaultant and rotisserie chicken eater there's a, <laughs> 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 a, little, there's a slight imbalance there <laughs> but you know set the I bar mean, i can make it i can make a case i don't even i think i saw that story when i was drunk and i was like thanksgiving oh yeah i eat turkey this guy ate 30 rotisserie chicks in a row badass it's a segment. Let's do it, guys. And you, neither one of you objected. So here, here we are. Here we are. All right. Uh, all right. We're getting into the social media segment comments. Um, we got a few. Alan, do you want to do you want to go tit for tat? Or do you want me to read these? Uh, I mean, you. I don't have the drive access unless you want to tell me what the password is you, on you, uh, recording. So, you have uh, the goddamn drive access. You. I don't. Of. I just tried it like two minutes ago. I swear to you. 
All right. Just read the goddamn comments. We're going to have to fix this. That's fine. Comments. Okay. Uh, this comes via the TikTok video. That's a man. This is where Murr goes on to talk about the George Michael Faith video. And, uh, <laughs> where, his, where his confused young mind thought, that, that's a man. Look at him. Look at him dance and flail and shine and glisten okay, and glimmer. I don't feel like you're doing it justice. I felt like as a young child that George Michael just exuded heterosexual masculinity okay? gotcha i mean it was it was the hulkster well in the 80s and, god i understand um so this comes from uh dupatron one it just says, simply says great album exclamation point <laughs> next one scott Fair. 2b says 100 percent had an earring in the mouth after seeing this vid <laughs> No, it was a earring. Was that a prince No, sorry. Earring. <laughs> sorry, I missed. I misread that. I actually mistyped that. Earring. <laughs> earring the month after seeing this video. Oh, so yeah. it, one month after seeing it, it had the earring. Right, 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 right. All yeah. right, all right. Yeah, la, yeah. La, la. Um, okay, th- this, is, this is a great one. This comes from Instagram, Who's Counting. Alan, do you remember uh, Who's Counting? Uh, no. That's where we were talking about average penis sizes. Uh, amongst the kind of, you could they have they had a globe uh they have a they have a website to where you could hover over every country and it gives you the gives you the average uh-huh. um some oscar seven seven eight eight five four bear with me here uh nice. increased penis size is up to nine inches <laughs> i <laughs> uh, i con- so old, so old message him. <laughs> i contact him and he responded and tell me what to do. Finally, he sent me the remedy through UPS and I received it and I gained increase in my penis. All thanks to Dr. Sediapo. Contact him now and bear with me. It's not just penis size. Contact him now. Sickness and disease cure are available. One, ALS. Two, diabetes cure. Three, premature ejaculation. Four, herpes cure. Five, worse cure. Six, HPV cure. Seven, fibroid. Eight, penis enlargement. Nine, breast enlargement. Ten, hair growth. Eleven, sickle cell anemia. Growth me for more email. <laughs> I have all of those. <laughs> <laughs> Was this guy just fucking rambling? <laughs> yeah. uh. This is 100%. An African guy in like a computer farm, just trying to scam people on social media. Yeah, and that's our guy. You should hit him up. <laughs> just remember, we had a Japanese woman who was willing to pay a man fifty some thousand dollars for space landing fees, right, to come back from the International Space Station. So, I, if if it didn't work, you wouldn't see that message. I I don't know about you guys, but the breast enlargement. Is I mean I, that, I was kind of like okay yeah we did premature ejaculation breast enlargement I'm like a rank and I'm okay. Uh, if I had bigger tits and my penis worked, imagine how my day would go. I wonder like, is there like a setting on the pill? Is there like a dial where I like? <laughs> well, if I don't want to cure diabetes, but I want bigger dick, like do I do it? Does the pill? Does the pill? How does the pill? How does it know what I want? The, the pill's intuitive, Alan. It knows uh, what you want. Do yeah. I just think about it. I just yeah. think of like it. Oh, what a bigger dick! Fucking low blood pressure. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like the compass from Pirates of the Caribbean. It it knows what you want. <laughs> I, I want a bigger dick, and I have terrible seasonal allergies. <laughs> <laughs> and just hope that it works. <laughs> but at all times, I need a bigger penis. I'll take a medium dick, but I hope these cold sores go away. All right. Please. <laughs> uh, this comes from President Karen and TikTok. This is where you two went on a fucking absolutely fabulous rant about Karen seeking the boss of the North Korean government. I want to talk to your boss, China. Uh Tony underscore B underscore goat underscore chopper. Tony B goat chopper says, uh, who would vote for her because of her name? Kind of makes a great point, but uh, I don't know. Does it hold water? Well, yes and no. I understand his query, but I think as Alan and I established, like, you know, it's kind of like the people that it's kind of like the people that voted for Trump who aren't 
like Trumpians. It's like this this isn't what we want, but this is what we need right now. So it's like that's the Karen vote. It's like fuck. Karen knows how to get what she wants, and we need some shit. So I guess we're gonna give it to Karen. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate, Alan? Yeah, I think I think so. Like, you know, nobody wants a Karen, but every now and then a Karen's powers are useful. You know what I mean? Like, she sweet talks a, you know, like a guard letting you into a gate. I don't know if it's sweet talking, but yes, yeah, so I know what you mean. You get what I'm saying? I'm, I'm throwing lipstick on a pig here. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, you're right. You know, sometimes you don't want it, but you could use it. Look, yeah. bottom line is we've all been in line and seen a Karen raise her voice and get a whole bucket of chicken from KFC. So every now and again, if shit's going down in the world, if that same Karen can raise her fucking voice and get the Chinamen to go after the North Koreans, we might need that Karen. Yeah. I, I tell you, guys, I, I, I almost asked for a manager once, and then, like, recently. Then, and then I was like, ah, oh, I am in the wrong package for this. This is not... This is not my fight. Like, uh, oh, fuck it. It was only like ten bucks. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> the Karen dividing line. Yeah, it's was like, oh, I'm not, I don't got it. This isn't in my wheelhouse. I need a, I need a white woman with a bad haircut. Yeah, I don't got that shot in the bag. <laughs> yes, for your, for your golfers. <laughs> This comes from a uh, YouTube short. It's been on uh, posted on a few other things. Bitten in New York City. This is from Fun Fact Friday, where Murray, you had said uh, a handful of people every year. I think it's thirty two hundred or six. Actually, sixteen hundred people in New York City are, are reported as being bitten. Uh, this uh, Dan Duarte writes: uh, If you are bitten by a New Yorker, should you get a rabies shot? <laughs> yes. Okay, and then he 100%. said. There should be 1,200 New Yorkers receiving a knuckle sandwich and become toothless. Uh, then I said, I, 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 I had said I'm curious as to how many of these people just got fucking just blammed afterwards. Just oh, yeah, probably a good amount. Right. I would guess so. Yeah, I mean, if, if, yeah. if I'm on the subway and if I'm in New York City, I'm with our friend and our legal counsel, Adam. And if someone just decides like to, to fucking World War Z me in the shoulder, like... <laughs> Like, I have no questions asked, man or woman, Karen or Ken, fucking, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. Yeah. All right. We're on the same page. Fuck it. Moving on. Uh, Maybe even diamond cutter. That'd be great. Maybe. <laughs> the diamond cutter. Yeah. Give him <laughs> fucking. Stepdad names uh, via Facebook. George uh, Rickold says Doug agreed. Uh, street cred. TikTok. This is. Um, Alan, this is where you said uh, far right. Christ, I said you're like getting into so much stuff. I'm trying to give people, uh, listeners, the context. It was far right, 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 racist. Uh-huh. You said accurate. Mer said not accurate. Alan, you said a uh, uh, Christmas story wasn't written by Asian dudes, therefore it is accurate. That's true. Blickety Blow says this is this is a great point. Bear with me here. Tropic Thunder works because our RDJ uh, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Uh, ran stuff by Alpha Ch- uh, Al Pacino. Chino, Jackson, and others before filming. Context in movie crew does matter. Context did matter. Is what he's saying, right? Like, yeah, context he, does he, matter, he, yeah. Yeah, he was like, hey, actual black guy, is this funny and good to put in the film? Mm-hmm. And then he was like, yeah, that's good. One hundred and ten percent produced. No one on the set of Christmas Story was like, "Hello, Ping Jing, does this <laughs> seem okay with you?" Uh, because they could. That didn't happen. That just. Didn't however, happen. however, those Asian actors were given the script and said, "This is how it goes." And if you think that was one take, you're fooling yourself. And so those <laughs> Asian actors had to say to themselves, "Do I want to participate in this?" violent act of racism and they continued along for the filming and i'm sure they were very satisfied with their performance in fact it's one of the most classic performances we still we're, we're still debating it to this day so those asian actors had to agree to this script perform it several times and then be okay with it when it was completed i mean yeah but I, that doesn't make it not racist no, I think we disagree. I mean, we could disagree. You'd be wrong. 
Like, I still I still fall back on like, it's just like look, the paid actors are getting paid to do something. Yes. There there maybe maybe there was one that was like, ah oh, man, I feel like I can't that's not good for me. But there were three fucking random Asian actors because we know how Hollywood's loaded with Asian talent across many of the blockbuster films that we see. Oh that my those, that those three guys weren't like, I'll take that paycheck real quick. What'd you say? Fa fa ra ra ra. Yeah, got it. Okay. It, <laughs> and even still, it, it even to this day, and you still tell the story about the guys that you worked with in the kitchen that wrote shit wrong, like on purpose because yeah. it was funny. Well, they, no, they, were, they wrote it wrong on purpose because that's how they said it, and so exactly. that's how they wrote English. And so again, I don't mock them for their inferior linguistic skills. Because their linguistic skills are still superior to mine. I can't speak Mandarin. I can't speak Korean. I can't speak Japanese. I can't speak any of that shit. And these guys did a fantastic job. They, they can't pronounce the letters properly. But that's what's funny about it. It's an American Christmas in the heartland. These guys are attempting to sing a heartfelt, joyous song to entertain a family mm. on Christmas. And they mispronounce. No. Not racist. <clears throat> Just funny. They were like, "Welcome it's to, like, welcome to our Panda Express." Thank you. Yo, it's, Come like, in. it's all of those things. It's funny. It's a great American classic. It is all of those things and racist. <laughs> That's, I don't know how else to say that. It's fine. I agree with you on all of those things. I think it's funny. I giggle every time because racism's funny. Like, okay. it's fine. Like, it's just racist. You know what? I think we'll agree that. <laughs> Wait, are we agreeing that racism's funny? Is that what yeah, we're doing? I've said that a million times on this show. I think we found some common ground here. I think yeah. we found some common ground here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> finally, uh, drinks per week, a YouTube short. Uh, Mur, this is where you uh, saw it <laughs> while a visit with your clinician had asked you how many drinks do you uh, have? And he said, you, you said, how per day or per week? He's like, ooh, let's start per day. Uh, then you went on. It's a. Uh, it's too easy. Said and there were. And, and this is after the video because you had said I have a couple like during the week and then I indulge in the weekend. Uh, <clears throat> he says and then there are people who think it's normal to go through eight pounders a night. Eight pounders a night. Yeah. Yeah, that's sixteen ounces. Eight sixteen yeah. ounces. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, mm-hmm. that's that's a little heavy. That's uh like. Six too many. Yeah, definitely. I don't think is at any point. Commenter, is this commenter alluding to eight pounders not being a lot of beer? No, like <laughs> basically saying that, uh, that, that, that that there are people who drink that much and then think it's normal, think that that's okay. Oh yeah, well those okay. people are alcoholics. Yeah, yeah. Just about alcoholics. Yeah, I did. I I went back and watched it a few times, and I I I wanted to be sure that we weren't you know like oh alcoholism is okay. I think it was. Like the the bar set way too low, and you know the, the, what what they think about you know how many drinks someone should have per day or per week is is you know not normal, and we drink uh, above that. Us us being like the medical professionals who came up with this scale probably set the bar a little too low is probably indicative of our of our own alcohol problems <laughs> I, think, I think the problem is is that like these medical professionals like they set the bar too low like they should like there there's a reason obviously based on my clinician i said i have like two beers a night and maybe four to six on like a saturday and he's like oh that's fine like he blew it off like Get the fuck out of my office. Yeah. Like that's and then, not a Alan, problem. you concurred. You were like, yeah, you can drink more. That's yeah. Easy. So yeah. they should. They, they, so my point is, it's like to say, like, do you have more than two drinks a week? Like, fuck yeah. yeah. Like, I have almost two drinks a night. What are you talking about? Like, they set the bar at an, 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 an atrocious level. Yeah. Way well, down I here. I think it's to discourage people from doing it. But well, that's <laughs> true. It's either here nor there. I noticed like the fact, like, like okay, so so nor- it's it's dependent upon your body weight. And I I read up a little bit on this. It's 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 like four to eight, depending upon how much how much you weigh, because you can absorb more. And I like to think like okay, someone like I, okay, Murray, you had given your statistics earlier. I'm six foot two oh five. I think I think they're like okay, your limit is a uh, seven. Like. Ugh. 
seven, like one a night, even if I like stock up towards the weekend, like, yeah, sorry. And I'd be like, I think that's unfair. They're like, all right, we'll compromise eight. No, that's not a compromise. Make it 15, man. <laughs> Come on. Be realistic on this one. <laughs> Honestly, though, I would say like, just make it like at least a beer a night and then two on the weekends. And then you could say, so eight to nine would be like, that's a normal amount of alcoholic beverages throughout the week. I can, I can accept that so, okay. sort of. Right. But to say two to three a week, kiss my dick. I mean, I think I also think it's a little bit about what you drink. Like beer's mm. not good, but I think the bigger issue is that I just spent like the last five minutes listening to two guys who definitely drink at least a beer a fucking day argue about what the line should be. And as a guy who doesn't drink a beer every day, I don't really see a problem with the, with the the, the, the standard. Ooh, see, I'm I'm reformed. I take Monday through Wednesday off, and I load up for tonight to talk that's, to you all. That's how it works. I think, you, I think you even went over that. How that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably worse than mine. Like I have two white claws a night, and then on the weekends I have an IPA and three white claws. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm saying, like, I load up for the show. I get all fucking get jazzed up. <laughs> you know, everyone's funnier when they're drunk, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, generally speaking. <laughs> yeah, like, like, uh, like, yeah, like your white claws. They're probably not what doctors are like. Yeah, that's a good quality alcoholic beverage. A lot of anti, a lot of antioxidants mm. in your fucking booze lacrosse. Clean. There's real fucking grapefruit in that. All right. <laughs> real grapefruit, they say. Someone was singing fa ra 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 while they stomped on it. <laughs> That's, that's, that's bad. That's bad. I'm sorry. Got that in post. All right. Well, shit. Uh, middle class holes, everyone. Early in the 2023 time, I guess enjoy yourself. MLK Day coming up. Wait. That was last week. Yes, sorry. Ra, ra, ra. Get off your high horse. All right. Enjoy yourselves. Be a thrill. Don't take me fishing near a hill. Just ask me Smith. Give me a big old glass of beer Cause I get drunk Most every day I always seem to find myself late 